that is the game that I am going to be talking about this month. It's December. I'm probably going to constantly forget which month I am referring to. But for this month, we have this lovely game here called Crickle Cubes. And I know what you're thinking. It's colorful. It is square. No, it's not square, is it? What on earth is the shape? It's like a cube. It's colorful. It's cubed. And you know what? It's got your name on it. Well, not here, but you can just imagine your name right here. You too could be playing Crockle Cubes. So Kate, you've totally sold it to me. What is Crockle Cubes? Well, Crockle Cubes is an amazing game with a bag. You get a bag and in this bag, oh, you're going to love this. You're going to absolutely love this. In this bag are lots and lots of cubes. <laughs> I tell you, cubes are the thing that is in fashion very much right now. You also get a handy little rule book that shows you what to do, how to play it, how to score, how to be a cube winner. And that I like very, very much. So you may be asking yourself, what do these cubes do for you that you have never experienced before? Well, I'll tell you. I will tell you that right now. I actually feel like I should start this video off all over again because I was getting a little bit too caught up in the cubeness of it all. It went a little bit weird there for a second. But let's do a little bit of a do-over. This is Crickle Cubes, designed by Susan, I can't pronounce your name, McClinley, McClinley Ross, McClinley. McClinley, Susan McClinley Ross, published by Mindware. It came out in 2006 first, so it has been around for quite a while, but it is a fantastic game. It's not like the others where you've got little meeples or miniatures and you don't draw cards. One of the few games that I have that does not involve cards, which is, I think, very, very rare, actually. Uh, you play with cubes, and these cubes kind of look like dice but they instead have shapes and different colors so here is a row of all the different colors mm -hmm. so you get orange red green purple yellow blue and you get various shapes let me show you here and so as you can see you are going to whoa one got away from me you are going to roll these amazing little cubes and using the hand that you have you are going to build a sort of scrabble like grid of all of these wonderful colors and shapes and it actually turns out to be very beautiful looking so firstly you can also buy a quirkle version that is not cubes it is tiles so you only get one side, one color, one shot. I love this idea of having a cube where you can re-roll it and you are encouraged to re-roll. And if you can't put anything down, you're encouraged to roll until you can put something down, which is absolutely stunning. I love that idea of having this rather than flat, almost domino-like pieces. I suppose it's the game is really, if I were to describe it, a cross between dominoes and Scrabble, but with colors and shapes, which makes no sense if you're just randomly telling this to someone. But you know what? Darn it, it makes sense. I swear it makes sense. So you've also played the game open-handed, which is an actually fantastic because it's more inclusive. You're playing with a whole bunch of people, even though you're scored individually. It's a bit counterintuitive in that sense because you're being scored individually, but you can see what the other person has. But uh -huh. it solves this problem by the fact that you have to re-roll your dice. So although you can see what someone has when it's your turn, there's no guarantee that they're going to have those exact same things when it comes to their turn next. So that keeps it a little bit on edge, you're not 100% sure what's happening. And for the first time playing the game, it's actually really, really beneficial to have someone else sort of saying, oh no, but if you put this and this together, you would get more points than if you did the move that you were thinking of. So it is a fantastic way to start off. And the more you continue, the more you are second guessing and counter guessing what someone is going to do so in that way it is really really 
really fun uh, you don't really have to worry so much like with Scrabble if there was that one piece that you were going for because you really needed to get rid of your ex or you had a queue and the only available you was over there and someone else takes it just before you and you get so frustrated and annoyed doesn't really happen in, in Quirkle because the game is constantly, constantly changing and you all have these different goals uh, for the types of cubes that you want to get rid of. The most scoring that you can get is if you complete a row of six. So that's either with colours or shapes. If you get a row of six, which is known as a Quirkle, you get an extra six points. If you are the first person to finish your tiles as well, you get six points. So there are points here and there, you play until the whole bag of tiles is gone. Why am I saying tiles? They're cubes. I told you they are cubes. Get it in your head, Kate. So you play with the cubes until they're all gone and then the game is finished. You tally up and woo, done. So someone is going to have to be the scorer unless you allow each person to score individually. Sorry, please don't cheat. What I loved the first time I played Quirkle was I was a little bit overwhelmed and I was like, oh, I've got no idea what I'm doing. Please help me. And the girl I was playing with, she was absolutely fantastic. She loves board games and she loves teaching people how to play. So she was super nice and super friendly. And we actually ended up playing two games in once right then and there because I was having so much fun with it. Um, I since then bought it for myself because I was like, no, my parents are going to absolutely love this. I know what you're thinking. It's not just a game for parents, but I guarantee it. If you have like a family function, the older generation will also enjoy it. I'm, I'm not sure how old you people are watching it, but uh, let's just say that uh, anyone can enjoy it. Uh, what are the ages on this? Uh, six and up, six and up. It says two to four players, which I hadn't realized and how many players oh we played with four i thought oh gosh we played with five were we breaking the rules mm. i usually don't break the rules so this is a new sensation for me <laughs> so how do you play quirkle the aim of the game is to match tiles either of a color so you can see here that i've got one shape of every color in the row or match the shapes and i've got every single of the six colors but they are all the same shape and the aim of the game is to use these blocks, sort of like Scrabble tiles or dominoes, in order to join and match so that you can fill a row of six, ideally. And if you fill a row of six, you get a quirkle and you score extra points for it. The rule book that they give you is extremely easy to understand and gives you all the details that you need. It even gives you examples of play. So examples of somebody's hand and how they could position it and what they would then score. So it is super, super duper, duper useful. So the oldest player goes first. I'm going to play with my puppy there and my kitten there. So obviously I'm the oldest person. So what you do is you get the bag and you draw six dice one two three four five six okay there's my six you then roll the dice to see what your starting hand is now i can have a look and i like to um put colors and um shapes next to each other so i've got two so i've got two reds over here I've got one blue that I can add to the square. I have got two circles and that which I can add. Now, since it is, that is the first one that I rolled, that is my starting hand. I can roll all or one or two, however many of these dice I want, but I can only roll them again once. And my goal is to try and create a wonderful pattern that other people can play with and join onto and everything like that. So I think, I'm feeling pretty good with that, that, and potentially that. Um, I might want to re-roll things to either get more circles or to get more squares. So I'm kind of feeling circles right now, so I'm going to re-roll these four. And hope I get, okay, no, so instead I get two of those and two of those. So really at this point, the only thing I can do is sit down two of them so it really doesn't matter um let's start with that so i'm going to put down my two 
circles over there so let's put those now doggy is going to go next doggy gets four as well one two three four five six so i say four as well six as well i meant six okay so he gets to roll his dice okay so he has got oh he's got a lot of those he's got four of those but because there's two blues he obviously can't use both of them in a row um the only thing he can add on is onto the green with that so he could try to re-roll to get some um circles to add on or he could potentially keep i'm gonna keep those three as is because those three could help me in the future so let me re-roll these two and i get one blue circle uh, so a blue that is going to be good because then I can add on potentially like this the other thing I could do would be to add that on there but this will give me more points because I will put down one two and because I've added to something I get three four five as well so that will get me more points so that's the one that I'm going to go with Moving on to Kitten. One, woo, one, two, three, four, five, six. I lost the dice there, but it's okay. I'll get it later. And what I find so funny about this game is you can see that there's not a lot of the same colours, which always leads me to believe that some of the colours are missing or are less than the others, which is obviously not true at all. So, so far we've got two circles here. That would be fantastic if that wasn't an orange already in play can add the yellow to it to continue building up to potentially get the quirkle but i've also got a lot of blues here so if i roll a different shape of this one i can add it and that uh, potentially i can also add those two onto the end you know something like that so it sort of just depends on what's going to give me the most points so if i put two there that would be one two uh three four and if i add on there one two three four five six okay so that is actually going to be the best option for me i'm just going to re-roll these wait no i was happy with the square so just re-roll this one just for the lull of it okay so i do get my two different ones but it's not going to get me the most points so i am going to put those two like that so i get one two points three four five six points in total obviously before uh, the, the players take their dice i'm supposed to get re up to the six that i was given so i'm not bad on that one but it's okay we're not playing for real so now i've got my next six blocks here and I'm going to have a look and see what I can do. And the reason why I think the game is played open hand is because you can then help each other and say, oh, no, but you'll get more points if you do this. And it's a little bit more cooperative, even though it seems counterintuitive because you are scored individually, but you're playing open hand all together. I think it really works because people are re-rolling their dice. So you're not actually 100% sure what each person has got or will get so it's a little bit different in that sense which i really enjoy now looking at mine i could try to re-roll um my two reds to try and get a circle uh, otherwise i could only roll one of them and try to add on with that to something um i could also try to re-roll blues and the green meh, sort of the green is not really there for anything i think i'm just going to actually re-roll my whole hand for this one move those away okay so those two are two new blue ones that i can add unfortunately didn't roll a red circle so i'm a bit eh about that i do have this um green diamond over there which i could potentially add there at some point because there's a diamond here already which could help me uh for now i think my best option to do would be to add those two on so i get one two three four points in total and get another two dice so doggy's turn 
Right, Doggy has got no blues, so there is no way he is going to be able to go for anything like that. He's got a lot of purples though. Um, if only we could put the purples onto a space. He also has the one green, the one orange. He's got one yellow. Technically, the yellow would get him the most points. I can also add that onto the yellow. So let me try rerolling these two to potentially get the same symbol. Okay, I only got one. But that is okay because then I can put that like that maybe. And then I get one, two, three. Four, wait, sorry. <laughs> Sometimes the scoring confuses me a bit, I'm not gonna lie. One, two, three, four, five, six points because I have got that and that together. He gets an extra three, and now it is Cat's turn. Right, so Cat's plan of um, adding that was foiled. I've still got the diamond which I can add, and if I roll the last shape with this, then, you know, I'm, I'm golden. I get a quirk, I get an extra bonus six points. That I can potentially use now and create another row up there, but I don't know if I want to. I've got the this one that I can add to there, which is also helping with the quirkle. Alternatively, I can create like my own new line and put it in like that. And potentially the blue can go there, but we can't continue the blue line because there's already one there. You see how it gets a little bit uh, confusing. So I think I'm going to keep that one. I'm going to reroll this. I don't need to reroll that. Um, I could reroll that just for the heck of it, but I don't particularly need to. Uh, so let me just reroll these two, see what I get. Ooh. Oh, I thought I had the lost shape. Now I need the star. So unfortunately, that wouldn't work. Um, I've got the diamond, which I can add. That's fine. So I can either go one, two, three, four, five, or I can do one, two, three, or I can do one, two, three, four, five, six. So six is my best option. I am going to then go with that. Get another two tiles, and that is Cat's turn over. So now, coming back to me, I have got an awful lot of greens, and look, all of those greens actually match onto there. So now there's just the square missing to make it a quirkle. So that would get me one, two, three, four, five points. Um, alternatively, I've got these reds. I can't really do much. I can add on to there. So I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many points is that? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's a better one so far. Um, even though I've got this here and I could potentially add it on to the red, you can't do that because it's going in two different directions at once. Um, I, I could, if... If there was something here, you can sort of add on either side. Like I could add there and I could add there, but I can't create two different directions, if that makes sense. So my best choice would be to do that. Although that does unfortunately open this up to one person needing a blue of this cross in order to get a quirkle. But you know, sometimes you just got to make the sacrifice. Okay, coming back to dog now. Hmm. So I've still got these purples, which I can add to this over here. Or, ooh, this might be a better idea. If I put them like that, then I've got that scoring there, which I can also get. So that would get me one, two, three, four, five, six over there which is very exciting to me right now. This square I could potentially put there, but it's not going to get me nearly as much points. This I can try to re-roll just for the heck of it to see if I get um, anything there. And this I could potentially put there next time, but I can't do that in this turn. So let me just re-roll this. I get a diamond, which is the missing one that I need, but if I put that down, I'm only going to get one, two, three, four, five points. And if I do this, I get one, two, three, four, five, six points. So that is what I'm going to go with. So I need to draw up to three, I mean, six. I need to draw three to get to six. Wow, I cannot speak today at all. 
so we come back to kitten's turn now kitten has got an awful lot of blues that one is the one that we potentially need uh, okay so the red that red's not really helping me at all but i don't really think i want to change it right now orange meh could re-roll this yeah let me re-roll those right and so i roll these two which i don't need at all and i roll that which i potentially do need so if i put that down one two three four five if i put this one down one two three four five so either way it's going to be one of those now there's only one more purple needed and one more blue needed but i've got two blues in my hand right now unfortunately cake player also has two blues and dog player also has two blues so by the time it comes back to me around i'm probably not going to be able to benefit from that but case has got no purple and dog's got one purple so it might benefit me more to do that to keep the points to myself rather than the blue and then open it up for other people to get so i'm going to put the purple down i'm going to keep my blues so i put that one down so i can then put the those on the sides to make a row of diamonds as well so i'll get one two three four five six seven eight points for that and then i draw another three and my turn is done so comes to kate kate is like okay so wait there's diamonds that i can use there that circle is totally useless to me right now that is an interesting shape but nobody cares if i can draw the missing roll the missing ones for that it would be amazing so let me keep my diamond let me re-roll that let me re-roll that uh, i kind of like that shape just because Ooh, that blue one went away but yeah i've got one missing piece there so if i could just oh no my favorite piece has come back to haunt me so this is a bit of a tricksy one i can with pleasure Put that one there to get myself five points but i've got a lot more greens going on one two three four five whereas if i did something like ooh, maybe if i do something like that one two three four five six seven over there versus one two three four over there so it would be best if i were to put it there uh, so that's a very interesting one that I've got on. So I think I would do that. I have this that I can add to there in case someone else doesn't roll it. And so the game develops and builds and continues on in this manner until all of the blocks are done. And you keep playing and keep rolling your hand until every single player has put down every single block that they possibly can. And then the game ends once all the tiles are gone. Uh, so the person with the most um, points at the end wins, which is fantastic and easy. And there we have it. So now that you've grabbed your bag of Quirkle Cubes, I'm sure that you had a lot of fun. And now that you kind of know how to play the game, it would be fantastic if you decided that you wanted to purchase it. I'm sure there's lots of places online or stores that you can get it from. Here in South Africa, I got mine from Timeless Board Games. I'm actually getting quite a lot of my games from them. I'm also using the Big Box Cafe in Cape Town. I'm up here in Johannesburg, where which is where Timeless Board Games are. So depending on where, where you're based in the country. Otherwise, um, if you are not near any of these places or you don't particularly feel like going, um, if you go to Raru, you will find fantastic deals there. They've got a lot of wonderful stuff and they've got a lot of board games as well. But I think Raru and Timeless Board Games are my top two, which is where I'm going to be getting all of my games from. So anyone else in South Africa, I recommend. <laughs> And so there you have it. You have seen the wonderful tiles. I have shown you all that I know, which is probably not that much, let's be honest. But I hope that you enjoyed. If you have any comments or suggestions on games or if you would like to share any tips with anyone, please feel free to leave a comment. I usually don't advocate for commenting or subscribing because you can do whatever you want to do. You're a thinking human being. You can make your own choices. 
And for my sneak peek on what I'm going to be reviewing next, I'm not going to say a single word. I am, well, I suppose you won't actually get it if I just show you what I was going to show you. But anyway, I decided on it. I am rolling with it. Next month's sneak peek is... Meow. Actually, it doesn't go meow, does it? No, it goes, listen, listen. Meow. <laughs> Why am I still meowing? It's not a cat. Oh. Clue number two. Yeah, as you can tell, this is not a master ball and now I'm just ranting. I'm so sorry. Goodbye. I forgot to put on my necklace. Can't do it with my necklace. Why is it looking so hard to put a necklace on? There we go. And you can't even really see it. Oh well. I actually feel like a sh shirt.